In this lecture, you'll learn what type of websites you can build with Flask. But before we get into that, we need to talk about how websites differ. We'll do this by talking about real-world website ideas. For example, let's say that you wanted to throw up a landing page for a new startup. It would be composed of a home page with an email sign-up form and a couple of other pages to talk about your product. There's nothing fancy going on here at all. In fact, if you leveraged a third-party email newsletter service, you wouldn't even need to use a web framework to create a page like this. But for argument's sake, let's say that you have plans to expand on this site in the future, so you decide to use a web framework for it. Flask is a great fit here because you'll be able to leverage the power of Jinja 2 for your HTML templates, and Flask makes it easy to deal with form submissions. You could get something like this going in Flask with a single file that's about 75 lines long. That's not bad at all. You could whip something like this up in a few minutes and then concentrate your efforts on making the HTML templates look pretty. Now, let's say that you want to create a more complex website. Perhaps it handles user registrations and allows you to serve protected files to users who sign up. Well, Flask is a great fit here too. Python has one of the best database ORM libraries around, and there are Flask extensions to hook it up with Flask in a painless way. Oh, and if you don't know what a database ORM is, don't worry. We'll get into that later on in this course. Now, let's say that your application has different needs and you want to create an API backend with a single page web application frontend that uses whatever JavaScript framework that you want. Well, Flask is a perfect fit for that as well. There's a bunch of great API libraries to choose from. There's really no limit to what you can do with Flask. It has all the pieces you need to write complex and scalable web applications. The best part about it is, it tries to stay out of your way and give you as much control as possible while still offering a few sane opinions. You might be thinking, well, how does Flask compare to other web frameworks like Django or Ruby on Rails? That's a good question, and I'll see you in the next lecture where we go over that. I'll see you then.